and then somebody will just burst into crying. Now, when the man was gathering himself from that cry, he started saying, look, um, um, will you, what will you need? Um, what's the bill for this hotel? What is, um, you need a bus? Uh, I have two buses. I have, the, you, you know, he was just dishing out things. He was just dishing out things. And like Pastor Chintok said, he had an idea of what the account or the financial status was. So right before our eyes, we were seeing provision that God, you know, made. And this is testament to the fact that God indeed actually stared at this. So it was awesome. But let me touch on the Eastern experience because moving around the Eastern states, one of the most touching things at that moment was to see pastor go, go on his knees and beg the Easterners to forgive um, to forgive the nation for what was done to them. Because he went into history telling them about all that happened, the civil war and stuff that, of course, brought about the agitation for Biafra. And there were people in that hall that year, I think after that experience, after him, you know, one of the most senior ministers of God in that whole region, stood up and said, you have just gotten a convert. Because he said, look, he said, I am a Biafran, and I preach Biafra. You know, so you can imagine the level of influence that would be on his congregation, on several other people. But that man and several other people that day just renounced Biafranism and embraced one Nigeria. This is something that only God can do. I, I don't know how to explain the depth of that because it's a deep philosophy that has eaten up people. If philosophy is something people hold on to as something that it will take God. And I saw God breaking that stronghold. And people now embracing one Nigeria because the main thrust of that, one of the main thrusts of that movement that time was the issue of one nation, one Nigeria. And if there is nothing, I say if there is nothing, that that movement achieved was that it has kept this nation as one Nigeria. It has kept this nation. And um, what development will you talk about when the people are not even one in the first place? We bless God for that. That was a very powerful experience for me. Now, one of the things... Prior to all this in church, we had had series of times of prayer, of early morning. I can't forget that season. Almost for months, every morning, early morning, there were prayers. And at the point, some of us were like, ah, what is doing this man? You know, because then nothing was happening. I mean, there seems to be some kind of quiet. But it appears, you know, there, there is a kind of premonition or... He had a staring, knowing that something is coming. And we began to pray. And what was the prayer at that time? He said, we will not lose our nation. We will not a hoof, not a hoof of this nation shall we lose. We prayed those prayers over and over again. And going through to these various states, that was, you know, the prayer that we prayed. And then one other thing he emphasized was the issue of value of life. That what is the value of of life of a Nigeria. Can we again come back to our senses and place value on the life of a citizen of a nation? And that was a very, very strong point that later on we would hear even the president at that time, you know, speaking about these same things we were talking about. And I knew, therefore, that this was a whole prophetic movement that was uh, orchestrated to redirect the affairs of this nation. It was quite very, very powerful. Pastor spoke then so much about the issue of national values. You know, what does our flag stand for? The coat of arms, what does it stand for? You know, uh, by the nature of the work I do, then I remember we were um, consulting for one of the um, agents of government. That was National Orientation Agency. And we were in a meeting then, and, you know, 
the director in, in that agency in charge of national values came and we were talking because as at that time what we were doing was what we call system study. And he was talking, he began to explain the national values, what each part of the coat of arms stood for, the national flag, the laws backing national flag, how you should put national flag, flag in a place, how the coat of arms should be put. All these things are clearly written with laws backing them. The, when that man was talking, I was in the meeting, but I was not there. My mind traveled far. And I, I walked, in fact, at the point, I couldn't stay through the meeting. I walked out of the meeting and I called pastor. I said, sir, the, all the things you've been saying, here is someone in a meeting here talking about everything. And I was shocked to find that we actually have these things gazetted the laws of Nigeria provide for them on how these things will be done. Pastor there and then said, look, tell them I need them in the meeting in Lagos. I want them to come, you know, and speak to us at the meeting in Lagos. Um, we want to announce the arrival of the chairman of this session, um, Ambassador Nuhu Audubajoga, the former deputy governor of Kaduna State. We welcome you, sir. Good to have you around. We really appreciate your time and um, ability to make it here with us this morning. Thank you so much. Thank you. So it was a very, very powerful thing, you know, to find that these things, after all, were there, the issue of national values and how, you know, we should begin to rise and take charge of these things and redefine the psyche of the ordinary Nigerian on how he should place value on uh, Nigeria. What were the prayers we prayed then? Let there be light. Light be. And he will call the various sectors of this nation. In education, in the military, in our oil and gas, in agriculture. Let there be light. Light be. Let light come. And it was just that the prayer in itself was another lesson to learn. I heard him speak in Abuja about what he calls the technology of prayer. And there are ways to pray in which you will just go straight to point and you get, you know, answers with God, you know. And that was really, really powerful. There's so much to say. I want to really just round up by saying, apart from prayer, pastor, if you leave pastor, he would like to do everything. Pastor wants the kind of education, the quality education in his heart that he would want to offer. I believe... Um, uh, there are so many people that time when he will talk in church I know of a lot of people who got up and say you know what, this education thing you are talking about I'm going to start a school I'm going to start a hospital and so on, there were people who started hospitals who started you know, um, um, schools who started farms different sectors of national development, people went act actively into them and these things started I can't count the number of uh, organizations that he is part of the board because when they start they tell him look you are the one who said this thing so come and be part of the board of you know these organizations this symbolizes I'm sure I, I don't know but I want to just perceive that perhaps he wants to just remain within some confines of his calling in order not to veer off into other things he, uh, I perceive that he believes many of us should be the ones to get up and do these things but in terms of national development and the issue of Nigeria, I believe Pastor has steered us in the right direction. And therefore, this meeting this morning is only apt for us to gather and talk about our nation. We want to really say thank you very much, sir, for how God has helped you and steered us in the right direction. Um, our chairman is here, and uh, um, I would like to go straight and call on him to come up and make his remarks uh, and give his address, after which we will take the citation and then go straight into the main deal of the day. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, can we with Jesus joy welcome our father, our grandfather, our chairman for the day. Welcome, sir. Thank you very much. 
Na gudi, please sit down. I don't know if there's any representative of the governor. Anyone here? Uh huh, as usual. <laughs> Before I start the protocol, let me not mess up. Our guest speaker, my friend Professor William Barnabas Curix, you're welcome once more. I cannot see it properly. It's Professor Lai, eh? Aha. <laughs> You're welcome. And uh, Professor Duga. I know most of you are either ministers and their wives. And the celebrant is here with us and his wife. Other invited friends. Distinguished ladies and gentlemen, it is a pleasure to be here today, and I feel very humbled to be invited to serve as the chairman of today's public lecture, an occasion organized to celebrate Pastor Chris Dalvan Governor. It is indeed a remarkable moment in his life to attend the age of 60. You are welcome on board. <laughs> but what is more remarkable about it is the fact that these years for Pastor Chris are years of God's countless interventions in his life and the many services God has used him to offer to the body of Christ. My family and I are highly elated and proud to associate ourselves with this great servant of God. When I was asked to serve in this capacity, I asked myself what are the things God has used Pastor Chris Delvan to do deserving a celebration of this magnitude. Some of them have been highlighted by the speaker I took over from. I had just some few when I came in here. I reflected and went down memory lane to take stock of the things I know and to ask others about other things I don't know. These are my findings in summary. God has used Pastor Chris Dalvan in the following areas. Preaching and teaching the word of God. That is his calling. <laughs> Delivery of prophetic word of God. Evangelization to the lost. Pastor Chris is so passionate about evangelism and missions. Countless spiritual and edifying songs. That was the first thing that attracted me to him. <laughs> These songs have been sung all over the world. Threatening loss of local assemblies, churches, and ministries worldwide. He's always on the move. He translated the Revised Standard Version Bible into Hausa language. He even gave me a draft of it. Calling on nation Nigeria to pray and repentance, popularly known as prayer talk. Pro <laughs> proclamation of healing of the body and soul of many. Supporting uncountable people financially and 
spiritually. Mentoring matrix of young ministers. For me as an individual, Pastor has been a blessing to me and my family. He has visited with us both in my house here, back in Nigeria, and when I lived outside the country. He visited me in Poland. My wife and family enjoy his messages and songs. I am therefore proud to be associated with him and his family, especially during this auspicious occasion of his 60th birthday. For today, the public lecture is a very strategic program in the lineup of activities for this celebration. The topic is up. I understand the topic is church and national development, the way forward. There is a better time to talk about national, there's no, sorry, there's no better time to talk about national development as it relates to the role of the church. Many Christians believe that the church should remain within its four walls. But let the government and perhaps the business community understand the function of national development. While I'm not here to talk about the topic or the subject, I believe justice shall be done on the topic. As earlier mentioned, our guest speaker, who is a well-known person to me, Professor William Barnabar Curix. I asked him the, where he got the name Curix. Up to today, I've not got the answer. Is academically and spiritually sound. Balance and very fit to do justice to this topic. I therefore call on all to pay very close attention to the lecture. Ask reasonable questions that will provoke thought and action. I call on the local organizing committee and Pastor Dalvan himself to ensure that today's discussion does not remain on the shelves. But do all to see that relevant agencies of government are engaged to ensure implementation of the community that shall proceed from today's discourse. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let me seize this opportunity to wish Pastor Dalvan Governor once again a happy birthday. <laughs> also, to wish his amiable wife happy celebrations of her husband's birthday. I pray that the good Lord will grant you more strength, wisdom, knowledge, and understanding as you continue your work with God and service to mankind. Thank you, God. May God bless you. Let's keep clapping. Appreciate him for this. Thank you very much. Thank you. Let's take our seats. Our brothers and sisters, we have come to the moment for the lecture. And uh, the chairman has, in a way, introduced the speaker for the day in person of um, Professor William Bernabas Curix. Uh, I believe the question that the chairman asked, maybe when he comes up, maybe today you will have an answer, sir. But um, before we, he comes up, I would uh, call on Pastor Diane Wadak to come and read his citation and I will therefore ask our guest speaker
to stand on his feet while she reads his citation. You're welcome, sir. Professor William Barnabas Curix graduated in architecture from Ahmad Dubello University in 1987, receiving the Best TAC International Prize as the best all round postgraduate student. He joined, yeah, it's worthy of, of a clap. He joined the services of the U university as assistant lecturer in 1988 and rose to the rank of professor in 2008. He became assistant dean of faculty of environmental sciences in 2002 and was, and was head of the department of architecture from 2006 and 2010. He later backed an MA degree in law and diplomacy from University of Jos in 2001. During his tenure as head of department in ABU, the department received the accreditation of the Commonwealth Association of Architects for the first time in its history. Professor Curix maintained a balanced academic and professional life. He is well published in both local and international journals and has delivered several lectures in his area of specialization, and that is theory of modern architecture, including the 80th birthday lecture in honor of Professor E. A. Adeyemi. He received the Distinguished Service Award of NIA several times as a, member, as a member of the first scientific committee of the Architects Colloquium, Colloquium, right? Colloquium, and of several other committees. In 2003 and to, sorry, in 2003 and 